Hello and welcome everyone to another StarCraft 2 England cast. Today I am casting the Asus Republic of Gamers Winter Assembly 2012 quarter finals and this is game two between Stefano and Elfie. Now if you do if you haven't seen game one go and watch that now this is game two I am not responsible for any spoilers you get after this point. Okay, so we know that Stefano lost game one and I haven't actually seen Stefano lose for ages. Now, Elfie managed to take it really, really nicely just with a big death ball off of two bases, a seven game with a robo. Now, Stefano is really one down in this best of three series. So Stefano could, in theory, get knocked out here and that'd be a big shock. I mean, Stefano's just been winning everything at the moment. He is literally one of the best Zerg players probably on the planet so it'll be really interesting to see what he does a forge fast expand going down obviously the map is Shakura's plateau so a forge fast expand incredibly easy to pull off um, again they're in close by air positions so that just means Stefano will get the easier scouting information a bit sooner about what's going on um, Elfie just getting this probe in very very nice and early obviously it is the tournament version of the map so there is a supply depot just to prevent wall offs and, I mean, Stefano almost certainly going to go for that 15 pool build, which is pretty standard. You can't go hatch first, as I said, in game one, because you're just at too much risk from cannon play on the Protoss part. Now, again, there goes Stefano getting that 15 pool out. Pretty standard. It might have actually been a 14 pool, so maybe a bit earlier now. Just to deal with, in the first game, obviously, Elfie did pile on block Stefano's natural and that did delay him quite a while now on Antigua's shipyard that's not too much of a problem but on Shakura's plateau taking a third base is a lot further out and a lot harder to defend so Stefano probably ideally doesn't actually want that base to get blocked too soon but Elfie may just still go for the pylon block it'll be interesting to see whether it is something that goes down and actually Stefano managing to brilliantly just sneak in that hatchery there now the only danger is obviously Elfie could commit to a cannon rush but it doesn't look like it's going to be just going to poke up in just get a count on the lings it was a nexus it may have actually been a nexus first nexus before for forge so it must have been so yeah a nexus before forge build quite greedy by Elfie but I mean he knows that Stefano's got this second base out he knows he can probably get away with it now Elfie could do this quite nicely now. Just keeping that probe there ready to position the full wall off if needed. The forge is going to finish. And, I mean, that overlord is going to see everything. Stefano now knows that that nexus came down incredibly early. And that he needs to do something. He could try to punish it, but he doesn't have the lava to do anything there. And one zergling alone won't be able to manage to do anything. A cannon is on its way down now for Acer Elfie. And... Now Stefano just using this ling to check for any kind of pylons which could be in position. That probe has been found by the Zergling and will get taken out. Meanwhile, Stefano's natural base is just coming out. Move that queen down in ready to inject. Starting his second queen at the main base. The third base is also on its way down. Elfie will scout that and know exactly what's going on. And it'll be interesting to see what Elfie chooses to do now. Actually going for, I believe it's... A full wall off there's absolutely no gaps I think here so again slightly more unusual and Stefano might get a bit suspicious of that Elfie has got two gases pretty early on um, so we may see a Stargate play which could be effective but Stefano is very very good with his timings of his evolution chamber also very very good with his queen timings so he may actually be able to sneak away relatively unscathed unless it is a double stargate then it could take some damage so we'll be interesting to see what goes down i mean all speculation until we see what elfie has in mind warp gate tech is on the way and sorry probe you can't come back in now you're not welcome you've been exiled from the protoss colony and uh, that must be a horrible position that probe was like i diligently scouted i did what you told me to and now you just stop me getting home horrible position for that poor probe but alas it's a probe's life now if we come and look back at this base we are going to see a double stargate play by Elfie go down so obviously close by her positions Stefano may be expecting this no less so he's literally going to have to defend this with queens queens and spore crawlers and um, hopefully he gets quite a few of both 
because this third base is very very spread out I mean the creep spread even between the bases isn't complete yet or even a creep tumor down so it'll be interesting to see what Stefano does a void ray coming out straight away Elfie may choose to go for a Phoenix to go with that void ray obviously finishing times they'd finish nearly identically and would allow the lift on the Queen now it's Stefano getting the Roach Warren and the evolution chamber at simultaneous times so he should be able to get a spore down just in time and actually a double void ray play by Elfie now Stefano has poked up here seen the full wall off and to be honest that's probably setting off alarm bells he knows something isn't quite right if it is a full wall off then most probably it's not going to be gateway he's also going to see there's no chrono boost going off on this warp gate tech so probably going to be fairly sure that it's something a bit fishy. Now, creep spread between the second, the natural and the third base is quite good, um, as expected. So, shouldn't be too hard defending that. But obviously, this overlord is going to be key. Will it scout the void ways coming through? Two void ways just queuing up. Elfie really is just going to go for this. He's going to wait until those chrono boosts go down. Moving those void ways tentatively, teasing me. Am I going to go? Is he going to go? No, yes, no. It, yes, he is going to go. No, he's not going to go. Seriously, this is like. I don't know if you ever get that, where if you're just walking along and some, it's a narrow path and you're both walking on the same side of the road but towards each other and you step left, you step right, you step left and they just mirror you and it's irritating. But no, Elfie's just going to go for it now, four void ways and if we take a look here for defence, Stefano did manage to scout it with that overlord so just throwing down a lot of spore crawlers, five spore crawlers at the main base bringing that second queen up as well and try to bring the roaches and lings, obviously they can't attack upwards and straight away just four void rays will melt those queens and to be honest once those queens go down i don't know why elfie wouldn't just go for the natural base and the third base is it moving out now because obviously there's just so many spore callers there one void ray already down now i mean elfie's just got so much stuff getting out another void ray now obviously lair is done so hydrics are coming out and wisely stefano moving two three of those spore callers just down to the natural base so the third base is actually still weak i believe but obviously the Hydralisk then is there ready in position. Now the Spore Callers are getting repositioned. But only one up at this main base. And two at the main base sorry, But they aren't spread out. There's a big gap here now. Elfie could take out everything. And try to move those Spore Callers. But obviously if the Voidways do manage to charge. And focus fire down the Spores. Then they could do a lot of damage. And just moving out of range of one of them. Which is the best thing he can do here. And Stefano using great great micro of the Spore Crawler. In order to defend this and meanwhile just counter attacking up but there is a single cannon there and a single sentry but I mean once that well the warp gate is going to go down and I don't actually think Elfie's looking here does manage to get a force field but it doesn't have enough space to block off and now there are zerglings in the base but only three of them but it does give vital scouting information we'll see the six gateways coming down and the warp prism so Stefano knows exactly what is up here but meanwhile just got out his base here he has got the Hydralisk then, and I mean, to be honest with you, until Colossus are out, Hydralisk could be extremely effective. If Stefano goes for some kind of big Hydra Roach play, it could be incredibly good against a mass Gateway build. And Gateway and Stargate, just getting some Phoenix out as well now, picking up units in that War Prism, going to move it across and just try and do some more damage. I mean, that could be very, very effective. Currently, Stefano's army is all out of the front. That Overlord's still scouting absolutely everything. And, I mean, those air units have to stay back just because of the spore caller. The hydralisks are moving in now. And, to be honest, once that war prism gets in, it could do some big damage. A fourth voidway is there. All of those gateways are pretty much complete. And the hydralisks are just poking up and down. And that war prism actually moving back now. So, I'm not quite sure where Elfie's planning on going with this. But he's getting more and more behind Stefano the longer he waits to do any damage. So, he really has to do something and he has to do it quickly. Positioning that warp prism there, warping in some more units. It looks like it's just going to be a full on frontal attack, but there's a lot of hydralisks building up, a lot of roaches, and a lot of lings. And Elfie just doesn't have the units to deal with this at the moment and has dropped everything in the warp prism, so it looks like just going to go for it. But Stefano's getting this fourth base up and it's getting really, really good. It got all six gases, and so it's really a four base Zerg against a two base Protoss, which obviously always, always favours the Zerg player. Now, I mean, Stefano can just max up. The only thing Stefano doesn't have is upgrades. But then neither does Elfie. Elfie only just getting plus one attack now. Still not really finished, but 
probably why he's buying his time. He's waiting for that plus one to finish, and then he'll just go. But there's a lot of hydrolisks. Hydrolisk range is also going to be done. Hardly any sentry, so those roaches are going to be able to get a good surround. A couple of stalkers, but I mean, there's just so much stuff of Stefano. He's nearly maxed out. And straight away, there he goes. The force fields are quite good. Managed to cut off some of the army, but there's just such a surround going on here that Stefano is just able to do absolutely massive damage. And I mean, this is pretty much it for Elfie. Stefano just completely remaxing on a hydralis, it looks like. Just getting as many as he can. His money's basically at zero, and the rotors have completely destroyed everything there. But the void rates are still up. Skill rays are pretty good, as Day 9 would say. And some transfusers actually going off on the hydralisks. And there's the GG by Elfie. So that was a brilliant game. Stefano has leveled up this series to a one all. It is a best of three series. So it means we go into the third game and the winner will move on to the semi finals. So tune into the next game. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in a minute.